it's time to turn up the heat with the Mad Burnisher's baddest boss. As is becoming quite regular nowadays, there are two versions of Leo. Today I'll be covering the standard version, but there is a deluxe version aptly named Complete Combustion, which includes an extra faceplate, a bare torso, a throne with sitting legs, and another fire effect part. It's a tad more expensive, but you may find the extras worthwhile. So with that out of the way, let's get into everything that you'll find in either box. Leo has two faceplates, three right arms and hands, three left arms with two hands, a fire effect piece, his sword, and ice handcuffs. If you've seen the movie, you'll know that Leo has some really wild colouring. The green highlighting running down his left side, and the pink on his right. Which translates kind of awkwardly into real life, but it is there. This colouring is really the only visually interesting part of his body, so he looks his best when he's angled in such a way to show it off. His hair, while looking super fluffy, also has the special two-tone shading, which does look pretty snazzy. Leo comes with a suite of options to show off his swagger like this shrug, that really screams I'm a boss bitch. He can even manage to rest his hand on his cheek like this which is hella cute, but maybe I'm playing up the sassy fangirl angle too much. Leo's fire effect is super stylized as a jaggy pink blob. Which looks cool, but unfortunately this is the only one he comes with and all he can do is hold it. I really wish he came with a wild arsenal of different fire effects or weapons for some dynamic action poses. Instead, they show this pose on the box, which I think is just him pulling his glove on. Not sure who really cares about this, I think it's kind of a throwaway pose. It does seem like Leo has been done a bit dirty, since even the deluxe version doesn't even have worthwhile extras for action poses. The lack of a crazy fire dragon aside, his sword does look gorgeous, and I would consider this to be his defining accessory. And what I mean by that is, if you don't like this, I probably couldn't recommend him. Since he doesn't have any extra legs or even a yelling faceplate, he can still look a bit stiff with the sword, which is a bit of a shame. But don't get me wrong, this is what I bought it for, and I'm still pretty happy with how it turned out. Finally, he does come with the ice handcuffs, and I think this pose can look really great with Galo triumphantly standing next to him. I'd show you if I had Galo, I don't, sorry. Anyway, initially I thought this was pretty niche, but I think there is quite a bit of fun to be had with it, and there's something about Leo standing with his legs like that that is just too damn cute. All in all, I think Leo is a fairly respectable Nendo, whether you're interested in either version of him. Equipped with both his sword and flame gives Leo the flair that I think he desperately needs to look interesting visually. I love the way that the yellow, blue and pink contrast against his black suit and how the colour flows across his body. While I would have liked to see more on the action side, I'm also totally fine with him just looking like this. I think it's just enough for a passing grade. If you're a big fan of the character or just looking for a friend for Galo, I don't think you'll be disappointed at all. Especially if you manage to get a hold of that rockin' pre-order bonus. As always, I hope you've enjoyed the review. If you have, leave a like, drop a comment, and subscribe for more anime figure content. This has been the Ando Experience, and I'll catch ya in the next one. Bye!